family. My name is Joshua. Pathfinder Day. Will you please join me? And I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And if you know that you are blessed, then you have a reason to give God praise right where you are. If you know that God has been good to you, then you ought to be clapping your hands right now because he woke you up one more time and he started you on your way. Is there anybody in here who just can declare that you are blessed? You maybe it's a health challenge he got you through. Maybe it was a financial challenge. I don't know what it is, but all I know is that you are here because the Lord is a blessing God. Can we just give God some praise because he is still a blessing God? Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for being a blessing God. Thank you for continuing to provide for us, to, for you continuing to take care of us. Thank you, God, for being a good and faithful God. Lord, man, it is such a privilege to be in your house today where we get to celebrate you, where we get to talk about you in community. So, Father, we invite your presence, God, to get deeper here in this space, God. Go deeper in the sanctuary. Go deeper in the virtual sanctuary. But more importantly, God, go deeper into our hearts and deeper into our minds so that when we leave here, there is no 
doubt, there is no inkling of, of doubt or whatever have you, God, that we are blessed. So, Father, have thine own way today. In Jesus' name we do declare. Let all those who know they are blessed say amen and give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Good morning and happy Sabbath, Beacon Light family. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for today. Amen. I've been waiting to be amongst family, to be amongst the people of God here at the greatest church in the land. Come on and say amen. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Beacon Light Church here in Kansas City, Missouri. I want to welcome you here physically in the house. Welcome those who have virtually joined us. Uh, this is the place to connect the place to transform, and the place to serve. This is the place that regardless of your color, your kind, you belong here. Oh, come on now. You belong here. This is your home, my home, our home together because we got a sole purpose, y'all. We are here to be kingdom focused, to do what God has invited us to partner with him to do. Amen? And that's to build his kingdom. Amen. And so, listen, family, I am excited about today because today begins officially on a Sabbath. It begins our Youth Empowerment Month. Come on, somebody. Amen and amen. And what better way to kick off our month with having our Pathfinders Day? Come on now. For many of us who've been in the Adventist world for quite some time, you know how in full pathfinder was uh, learning those songs going on camping trips and uh, learning those disciplines to help us be who we are today and so it is a privilege of mine to know that we got some young people leading in our worship experience on today started off by just telling us they were blessed today but today is our pathfinders day where they get to lead us out in worship on today is that not good news for us today Amen and amen. And so listen, as part of our initiative this month, as we are focusing on our youth, we have a scripture of promise that we want to lift up as we do every single month. And this month is under 1 Timothy 4 verse 12, <clears throat> which simply says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Come on, say amen. Listen, I think that's a good thing for all of our young people to know that, hey, don't let nobody look down on you because you are young. Listen, some of the greatest spiritual leaders of the Bible were young. The leaders of this church were young when they started. So, which tells me that in all of our young people, there is impact just, just waiting to explode from the inside of you. And we are just so excited to celebrate that with you all throughout this month. Can you say amen? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, listen, as we go throughout this month, we have a cadre of things uh, planned for our young people. We have events going on every single Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. We have events Sundays at 3.30 p.m. Uh, we have Saturday events. We have a whole lot of stuff going on because we want to make sure that our youth are empowered in everything that they do. Amen? And so, listen, one of the things we have going on on tomorrow at 3.30 p.m., we have an event called Drive Start, a, 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 a Car Maintenance 101. Now, listen, I don't know about you, but have you ever been driving and you caught a flat tire? Come on now. Come on now, saints of God. Let's not lie on this app. Uh, 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 and you didn't know what to do in that moment. And you wish you would have known that all you had to do was pop the trunk, pull the tire out, do all the stuff that you needed to do. Uh, uh, well, listen, on Sundays of this month, we're going to have these car maintenance one-on-one -on -one events for all of our young people for you to learn some basic car maintenance tools. Some of you may not know how to drive right now, but that's all right because we believe in preparation, right? We believe in preparing you for that time because driving will soon be, uh, a, if not a, next year, a couple of years away. So we want to make sure we're preparing you for what you're about to achieve. Amen? And then on this Wednesday at 6 o'clock, 
our youth team has planned a crime awareness event for all of our young people. When you see something going on in the community, what do you do? How do you do? How do you be appropriate bystanders that are helpful to our community? We have an event that's going to happen on this Wednesday, so we want to encourage and invite you on out to come to that. And then on next Sabbath, when did I say everybody? On next Sabbath, we're going to have an awesome worship experience. Because we all know that we support our V. Lindsay SDA school, where I have the privilege of serving as the school board chair, my wife as the superintendent in our conference, as well as the uh, lead principal of the lead teacher principal of that school. We are having our V. Lindsay alumni worship experience here at Beacon Lights. But it's not just going to be Beacon Light that worship is up with us. Uh, our sister church, Linwood, is going to shut their doors and they're going to be worshiping with us. Amen. So I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a packed house. Uh, we're going to have an incredible worship experience. Uh, Elder Pastor Joseph Eichner from the Linwood Church is going to be uh, lifting up the word. We're going to have amazing time for our kids there. Amen. Because it's important that we're supporting the education of our children. Amen. Amen. And amen. So listen, we, are, we have so many things planned out for, throughout this month that we are so excited about what God is doing here at Beacon Light. Listen, I also have another announcement. You all know uh, Brother Joe Adu uh, and his wife, Augustina. Uh, that is a young couple here. They joined our church uh, maybe a, a year and a half or so ado ago, and we did a baby dedication for their son. Uh, well, listen, I am proud to announce that they had their second child on this past week. Mom and baby are doing well. We praise God for them. The Lord is just expanding our church. We had the Percy's just a couple weeks ago. Now we have the dues now. Listen, God is expanding our territory uh, internally in our church. And so we just praise God for what we're doing. We want to make sure we're keeping those young families in prayer. Amen? Amen. Because right now it's sleepless nights. Come on now. Listen, my baby's three and one and it's still sleeping nights. Come on now. Uh, 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 but we want to make sure we're covering them, we're loving on them. I know that Sister Augustina, we were supposed to have our, her baby shower on tomorrow, so we're just going to postpone that. You can still give them gifts as they need it. But listen, we are just excited about what God is doing. Amen? Amen. And I know one, another reason uh, uh, why I'm excited is because when I pulled up to the parking lot today, hallelujah, we didn't just have a new parking lot that was put down. But we had the, the lines that was straight. It was freshly painted. Come on, somebody. It looked good. It, you, you felt proud coming up to the building. Amen. Felt like it was, we did something well. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I myself felt like God was pleased with Beacon Light. And it just got me excited for the next phases of our projects. Amen. Listen, we all know that we're going to do some work downstairs in our uh, kitchen area. We're going to upgrade that, have a state-of-the-art uh, kitchen so we can uh, open up our doors as a community health kitchen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add a second tier to the parking lot. We're going to put a parking lot on the upper part. Come on, somebody. Y'all ought to be giving God praise for that. Listen, I was in conversations this week with different contractors and talking with uh, Sister Esther Smith, who's kind of, you know, always leads out in our beautification projects and things like that. We were talking about church colors this week as we look to paint the church and upgrade it. Come on, somebody. Listen, listen, I, 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 I want to prophesy and, and, and say that by the end of the year, we gonna, uh, by, by the time fall comes around, we're going to go ahead and have all of those stuff taken care of. Come on, say amen. But listen, family, as exciting as it is, right, that we got these upgrades and we can see them live, we could not have done that without your financial support. Amen. Come on. Just like we shouted because we saw something nice, we need to shout because we had some financial support. Amen. Listen, family, we still need your financial support. Amen. Amen. Listen, we cannot do any of these things without you. So listen, whoever wants to be a generous donor, listen. The, the church doors are open to receive whatever you have in store. But we need you to know that we need your support. So whatever it is you feel compelled to give right now, today, to see these projects come to fruition, we want to see you do that. In the coming weeks, we're going to lay out a different plan that we're, for the folks who are wondering, what can I possibly give? We're going to lay those things out in just a few uh, weeks or so. But for those who just feel compelled, maybe you feel compelled to give $100 right now, $500, 1000 5000 10000 
thousand. Go ahead and we want to encourage you to give those. You can just mark on the tithe envelopes or on our cash app, dollar sign, the light KC. You can just mark on their capital campaign and we'll make sure we get your funds directed to our projects. Because, listen family, uh, I said this a couple weeks ago, when we get to heaven, we're not going to see potholes. We're not going to see chipped paint. We're not going to see dusty uh, 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 sidewalk. We're not going to see none of that. But if we're going to be the representation of heaven on earth, then we want to make sure our building is reflective of that. Amen? We're working on our characters. We get that. But we also want to see our building reflect that. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you and invite you to be a part of this giving campaign as it is vital for us as a church and how we move forward. But listen, family, uh, as you are worrying about that, listen, today is Pathfinder's Day. Amen. Today is Pathfinder's Day. And what better time for one of our, our Pathfinders to come forward and to just give us a welcome on today. So we want to invite Sister Akalia to come on forward, who's going to give us our official welcome before we stand and greet each other in Jesus' name. So you can come forward. Let's give a round to our young sister here, Sister Akalia, who will lead us in a welcome at this time. today to our Pathfinder and Adventure Day. It is the first one we've had since the pandemic and we just want to give you guys thanks for coming out and also for all the continued support that you have showed our Pathfinders and, and Adventurers over the years. Um, and we also want to say that we do still need a little bit more support as well. Um, we plan to go to our camboree. It will be in Gillette, Wyoming on the 5th of August to the 11th of August. And again, we do want to thank you for your love and support. And if there's you know, any additional support that you can provide for us, that would be greatly appreciated. So thank you all for coming out um, and enjoy the Pathfinder Day. At this time, we invite you to stand to your feet to welcome the person next to you. Uh, tell them that it is good to see them. Uh, ask them how their week has been. Now is the time for us to just greet each other and welcome each other to the house of God.
Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Listen, family, as we continue to welcome one another, one of the things that I love about this moment in particular is that when you see somebody, it, it sort of serves as a sort of a reminder that you got to be praying for them as well. Amen. We don't just want to come and greet one another and, and smile in each other's face and give each other hugs but, and handshakes, but we also want to be able to pray for one another. Because the reality is, is that for many of us behind the smiles that we see, there's pain and there's, there's hurt and there's suffering that we're experiencing. And so we want to just take this moment as young Tyler comes forward to to offer up a prayer. If you are somebody and you have something you need God to pray for, you need somebody to pray for you about. If you got a challenge in your life, a circumstance or something going on, we want to just invite you forward because young Tyler is going to pray for you a little bit. Listen, I believe that it's the prayers of our children that God has an open ear to. Amen? I, I, I believe that God can see the sensitivity and the the pureness, the joy that comes from a young person as they come and pray for it. So listen, as Tyler just prays, just a little prayer for everybody here today. Know that God may not be looking at the words, but God is going to be hearing the heart and the spirit that comes forward in this moment. So you ready to pray, man? Go ahead and pray. Dear Father, thank you for this day and thank you for li letting us uh, live a life that live the life that you give us. Thank you for just letting us come forth to have have these clothes, have have things to wear, shoes to wear, and just I pray for all the sick and some of the people who have died in our family, and just please help. Or have a really bad disease, and or somebody who who has died in their family, and just let 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 it just God come forth to them. Mm -hmm. Let God come forth to them, to come forth to heal them in their pain, because because in the song it says, "When I when I am weak, you are strong." Yes. When, when we are weak, when we are weak in, weak in our hearts, weak in the flesh, God is strength, strengthening us to, to really come through to you. So I just pray for all the sick, sick the, the people who, who are in the grave, the people, the people who, who have just been orphaned and all the bad things that have, have been happening in their life. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. As you all transition to your seats, uh, we want to just make sure we want to invite Elder Martha Allen forward because now it's time for our children's story. And so as she comes forward, we invite you all to sing Jesus Loves the Little Children. And we invite all of our younger worshipers forward to receive a word from Grandma Allen on today. children but before I tell this children's story to our children you want to say right there I have something I want to say to the pastor I want to thank you so much for fixing the parking lot and will you let anyone know whether they're in a wheelchair a walker or a cane they have access to beacon light and they can get in without any problems at all thank you Wow Pathfinders. 
You see on the back of my chair, I've got a uniform. I'm also a pathfinder. In fact, I'm a master guide. And I didn't get my master guide until about four years ago. So I'm a part of you. But the story I want to tell you today is something that deals with sin. I want to tell you about two boys named Matthew and Donnie and the skunk. You know what a skunk is? What is a skunk? Well, my story is about Matthew, Donnie, and a skunk. Matthew and Donnie lived in a housing development, and behind their house was a forest, a lot of trees, a stream running by. So one day, Donnie and Matthew decided they were going to take a walk in the forest because they were going to walk along the stream. Along the stream, they had something called skunk cabbage. And they wanted to go there to pick out some skunk cabbage. Now, skunk cabbage is edible. You can eat it, but it's only for medicinal purposes. And if you try to eat it, it's bitter. And so most people don't eat it. But it grows along the water, and they were going to try to find some. While they were there looking for the skunk cabbage, they came across a skunk that was caught in a trap. Somebody had set a trap for maybe muskrat or something like that. But the skunk got caught in the trap. And when Donnie and Matthew went there, Matthew looked and said, man, we got to get away from here because we know what skunks can do. Donnie said, I can't do that. You see, Donnie was a pathfinder. He said, I can't leave that skunk in that trap. Even though he might do something to me, I've got to help him. So Donnie walked close and closer to the animal and the trap. And as he was doing that, he was talking, letting him know, I'm not gonna hurt you, just be calm. I'm not gonna hurt you, I wanna help you. He talked very softly to this skunk. And the skunk with his beady eyes was looking at Donnie, and he didn't do anything. He just kept looking at Donnie. And Donnie, it's closer and closer and closer to the trap. And when he got close enough to the trap, he was able to pull the bars away from the trap so that the skunk could get free. Now the skunk had hurt his leg, but he didn't run away right away. He turned around and he looked at Donnie as if to say, thank you. Well now Matthew, after the skunk let, went away, Matthew would come to say, man, I don't know why you did that. I wouldn't do nothing like that because that skunk could spray something on you and it would take forever to get that scent, that smell off of you. And Donnie said, the skunk, is one of God's creatures. And he might not be what we want, but he's still made by God. And he said, you know something? We have friends that smell like skunks. We have friends that act like skunks. We have friends that would hurt you at the drop of a hat. But God has told us that we must be very kind to even those children in your school that treat you mean. You've got to be very what? very kind to them, and you've got to help them whenever possible. Because Jesus told something expensive for pathfinders. Everybody knows about it, but you, I want you to listen to what Elder Rufus tells you about what God wants and what we are. In Romans 5, 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
So what that means is he didn't wait until we cleaned ourselves up. He knew that we were skunks. He knew that we stank. But he still died for us. God, God died for a skunk. And God will die for you. He loves you so much that he's willing to give his, he was willing to give his life, even though you're a sinner. Is there anybody here that doesn't know what sin is all about? Tell me what sin is. So now, uh, uh, adults, you know what sin is, and our young people know what sin is. You want to say something? Come on. Sin is Sin is bad, but who can save you from sin? I want everybody to say it. Tell me, who can save you from sin? Tell me. Jesus, anyone else? God, anyone else? Holy Ghost, anyone else? Jesus said he died to save you from sin. The Holy Ghost came to let you know how to live right. The Holy Ghost is an example of how you should live. And God sent his son, Jesus, to die for you and to save you from sin. Now I need two people to pray. I need a young man. Come on. Come on. Yes. You want to come on. Somebody. All right. And I need a young lady. Okay, I got two boys. And I need a young lady. Now we want you to do short prayers and loud to make them Thank you for forgiving our sins. And thank you for this church day and thank you for everything that you have done for us. Amen. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for just letting us be with you today and um, let our hearts not turn away from you even when, when, we make a, when we make a sin or don't do what you you would not want to do. And, and just let us repent and, and just, for, and just so just forget it. Forget it and just move on because that's what Jesus did. He didn't take all of his, his time to just talk about one person. He, sometimes if they didn't want to listen to him, he, he just moved on. He's like, all right. But he's like, all right, so I'm gonna move on. To, to somebody else. So he will repeat me his prayers. And so that's what Jesus always wants us to do. We just pray. Thank you, God, for everything you've done for us. Thank you for taking our sins for dying for us. We will, we will all pray for you and, and sing songs and, and all all, all of us will, will pray you because you the one that died for us and you loved us and you took care of us even the, even when when we were when we had sin in our hearts you you were still still loving us and you still caring about us. Amen. Jesus loves us. Amen. Now, I know we took a little extra time today. I was told this week by someone, we need to allow our children more time in the church because they are the children of tomorrow. And so I want to thank each young person. And before you go back to your seat, I just want to give a short word of prayer for you. Heavenly Father, 
We thank you so much for our young people. We thank you for each Pathfinder here today. We thank you for the leaders. We thank you for the parents and friends that have come to support our Pathfinders. Lord, we know that without our children, our church would be so miserable. We'd be lonely. So thank you, dear Jesus, for giving each one of our children to us. I pray in the name of Jesus and for his sake, amen. You may go back to your seats and thank you.
drumming. Oh, you like the drumming? Mm -hmm. All right. I like, I like hearing you. Okay. Color guards, attention. Color guards, forward to the half step, march. Hold! Adventurers, come forward. Adventurers, attention. Adventurers, forward to the half step. March! Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. Column right, march. Mark time, march. Left, 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 right, left, left. Adventurers. Hold! Pathfinders, come forward! Pathfinders, attention! Pathfinders, forward to the half step, march! Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, left, 
left, right, left, right, left, 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 left. Pathfinders, column left, march. Left, left. Mud time, march. Left, 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 right, left. Pathfinders, hold. Adventurers, left, face. Pathfinders, right, face. We will now do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pathfinders, adventurers, present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adventurers, pathfinders, order arms. We will now do the Christ, pledge to the Christian flag. Like everybody join us, pledge to the Christian flag. After two, one, two. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood. Uniting all in service and love. You may please remain standing. We will now play it to the Bible. The so two, one, two. I pledge the Bible to God's holy word and will take it as a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. We will now adventurous. You may be seated. Adventures remain standing. Adventures. Attention. Adventures. Say a pledge. Pathfinders. We will now do the Pathfinder pledge. I will be pure and kind and true. I will keep the path and the law. I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. We will now do the Pathfinder law. We will now do the Pathfinder song. Oh, we are the Pathfinder strong. The servants of God are we. Faithful as we march along in kindness, truth, and purity. A message to tell to the world. A truth that will set us free. King Jesus, our Savior, coming back for you and me. Good morning, Big and Light family. I just want to thank, first of all, God for allowing me to be here today. And I want to thank uh, Brother Philip and Brother Cynthia and their Pathfinder Club to invite me here to take part with them in their program. I'm sorry, hold on a second. Uh, I have a question for everyone. A 
lot of, a lot of you guys may, may not know, but who started Pathfinders? Pathfinders began in 1946. John Hancock, a youth leader in Southern Correction, Southeast California Conference, began the first Pathfinder Club in his home church. He composed the Pathfinder song also. The objective of Pathfinders is to bring the youth to have a constant daily experience with God, making him reflect on his uh, correction, making him reflect on his creation and his care for us. Um, just if you're wondering right now, you see some of us right now with our scarf on our, on our body, on our shoulder. Um, some of some, um, our pathfinder doesn't have it. You're not full-fledged pathfinder until you have it. So now, Director Ward is going to be scarfing our pathfinder. So they will be full-fledged pathfinder. She has done this the course as a master guide um, a year ago, and she's just coming up to get her staff. It takes months, sometimes it can take up to a year. So we, our director, our conference tried to give us a crash course. And it's a lot of reading, a lot of study, and like four months or five months, so a year work. Color guards, post. Color guards, post. and pathfinders that are represented here for their parents come forward. Because we're a part of this. They, could, they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. You can uh, position yourself in front of your, your pathfinder and your adventure.
Now, Pathfinders and Adventurers, you are inducted. All right, go ahead and take your seat, family. Now, congregation, I'd like you to meet the Beacon Light Trailblazer Adventurers Club. Pathfinders and adventurers, attention! Pathfinders, adventurers, about face! And thank you. Um, we are always asking for your support, and um, we are not. Um, if you have a child and you would like to join the Pathfinder, we are always excited. We're looking for more Pathfinders. Um, I know that for Gillette, the tickets are it's, um, basically gone, but these all will be going to Gillette to enjoy what they saw on the video up here. That's what we're doing this year. It's every five years, and so they'll be going there to enjoy themselves and come back with lots of stories. Thank you very much. Pathfinders, adventurers, about face. Pathfinders and adventurers, post. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. It's praise and worship time. Please join us as we sing a song. It's called Through It All. i 
his word. Ooh. I've been to lots of places. Ooh. I've seen a lot of faces. Ooh. There's been times I felt so all alone. Ooh. But in my lonely hours, Ooh. yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus lets me know that I'm his own.
How many of you want to see him? I don't know about you, but I want to see him. So, God, we are asking that you just open up our hearts so that when that great day comes, we get to see him, experience him, live with him forever and ever. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you that you have the ability to open up our hearts and our minds so that we can see you here on earth, so that we can see you in our workplaces, see you in our homes, see you in our relationships, see you in our church. So God, we want nothing more than to see you. And we wanna see you in this moment, God. God, we celebrate you because of this accomplishment, this milestone in our young people's lives. And we praise God for that. And in addition to that, Lord, we want to see you in this moment. So we invite you to remove all distractions, all things not of you. And we invite you to move in this moment. I pray, Father, that you consecrate me, Lord, for thy service by the power of grace divine. May my soul look up with a steadfast hope and may my will be lost and die. May everything prepared come out with power and clarity. And may everything that I did not because of my human frailty come out with greater power and greater clarity so that we all may open up our eyes to witness a demonstration of what the power of God looks like through human frailty. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we just give a round of applause one more time for all of our adventurers and our pathfinders leading us on this day? And we want to give a special shout out to Brother Philip and Sister Cynthia Taylor, our Pathfinder directors. One thing you do not see is that they are faithful each and every Sabbath after church. They're going to be downstairs with our young people, pouring into them, and we praise God for them. Listen, at this time, we want to encourage and invite all of our younger worshipers. We do have our children's church that's going on downstairs, so feel free to transition all of our younger uh, worshipers to be a part of that experience. I know that uh, our children's ministry team has been planning diligently and We'll be having children's church this week, next week, the week after that. Praise the Lord for our children's ministry. Amen. And so we invite them down at this time. And for the rest of us that will be up here uh, looking at the time, we're not too bad on time. Come on, say amen. I told them yesterday I wasn't sure how long we would go today. I might have preached a a 15-minute word, but... I got a little bit of time today. (laughs) So family, as we are in this moment where we get to hear what thus saith the Lord, I want to invite you to stand if you are able for the reading and hearing of the Word of God. And I want to invite our attention to the book of Psalms, chapter number one. Psalms, chapter number one. I'll be reading in your hearing verses 1, 2, and 3 from the New International Version, Psalms chapter 1. The Word says to us, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers. Amen for the reading of his word. For the time that is ours together, I want you all to consider the thought 
rooted trees. Rooted trees. Holy Spirit, do thy will. Do thy will, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we do declare, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers. Amen. Family, as we begin this sermonic conversation, I want to invite you to consider something unexpected yet deeply insightful. I want to invite you all to consider the rings of a tree stump. A tree stump, which is formed when a tree that has been cut down or falls naturally, is the remnant portion of a tree trunk and root system deeply entrenched into the ground. The ring, uh, or concentric circles, which are impressed upon the trunk of the tree signifies the age of the tree and provides valuable information about its growth history. Rings can signify the age of the tree as each ring represents one year of life. Rings can represent seasonal growth as the width of each ring determines favorable and non-favorable conditions for growth. Rings can signify environmental conditions as it provides insights to what the tree has experienced in its life, such as the number of years of drought, diseases, insect infestations, and the like. Rings can suggest historical events that the tree has been through, such as volcanic eruptions, wildfires, floods, and more. The rings in a tree stump are fascinating because it serves as a natural record for what the tree has experienced throughout its life. Yet the thing that is interesting about a tree stump and its rings is that the only way for someone to discover it is for the tree itself to be cut down or fallen naturally. One will never be able to discover the experiences of the tree until the tree is opened up, revealing what's on the inside. The identity of a tree isn't really revealed until the inside is exposed. In other words, the identity of a tree isn't solely based upon what is seen on the outside. It's not solely based upon the height of the tree, the fruit that it may bear, the type of leaf that it possesses. Rather, the identity of the tree is found with what's on the inside of the tree. And church, just like a tree whose identity is hidden on the inside of it, may I submit for your consideration today that the true identity of who you are is determined by what's inside of you. That your character and aura is rested and rooted from the spirit being cultivated inside of you. That the animation of your being is not triggered or defined by familial, cultural, geographical, or socio-political norms and influences. Rather, it is inspired by a charismatic communion and connection with the divine creator. That your identity is not based on your color or your kind. It's not solely based on your gender or status. It's not based upon your wealth. It's not based on, upon all of these things. Rather, your identity is a communion with Yahweh. And the reason why I can take this theological position today is because when I excavate and place a magnifying glass of inspection on the creation story, Genesis 2 verse 7 declares that when God formed man from the dust of the ground, God has breathed in man's nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. What this means, family, is that it is the breath of God that animates one's bodily function. It's uh, the breath of God inside of us that keeps us moving and breathing and living. It is the breath of God that is uniquely planted and positioned into the depths and crevices of our being, thus allowing us to move freely as independent creatures. In other words, if I can make it plain, your identity of who you are is one in which God has connected himself to. 
Your identity is that God lives inside of you. Your identity is one that he himself is rooted in. And I don't know about you today, family, but that right there, knowing that my identity is that he is rooted in me, that's good news because what this tells me is that no matter what I go through in life, no matter the heartaches and the pains, no matter the challenges and circumstances, no matter the pain and the pressures of life, no matter the health scares, the family woes, the financial challenges, no matter the times I may have won wandered away from God, did my own thing, had no care in the world for God and his people. Despite all of that, the good news of knowing that God is connected and rooted in me is the fact that God will always be there. In other words, no matter where I am, He's right there with me. No matter what I've done, he's right there with me. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, he has not left me. He has not forsaken me. Why? Because he's right there with me. No matter how often life may toss me, how many times people may disregard me, no matter the times when I felt abandoned and abused, God is right there with me because he created my identity as one in which he is rooted in me. Oh, and we ought to bless the name of the Lord for always being rooted and connected to us. We ought to praise God right through here for what the psalmist declared when he said that if I make my way up to heaven, he's going to be right there. But if I perchance fall a couple times and make my bed in hell, he's going to be right there with me. Can we just bless the name of the Lord for being rooted in me? <coughs> Y'all got to pray me through this. My voice is acting up, but that's all right. That's all right. <clears throat> uh, 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 and because, family, but because we serve a God who is rooted in us, I hope that you can understand why when I read Psalms chapter 1, 1 through 3, that I can see some tension that exists in the text. The word says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on this law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by rivers of water, uh, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Ah, I look at this Psalms and I praise God for the blessings that come with those who walk in his steps. I, I praise God for those who uh, 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 follow and delight in the law of the Lord day and night. I, I praise God for those who pray every morning and pray every night. But my issue is when I take a look at my own life and many of you look at your life, can we be honest today? There's a stark contrast between the reality of being blessed in the text and the reality that we live here on earth. Because if we can be truly honest with ourselves, many of us, including myself, have found ourselves doing the opposite of what Psalms 1, 1 and 2 says. We actually find ourselves walking in the way of the wicked living not being reflective of the God that is rooted inside of us. Uh, 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 instead of, other, of us loving others and bringing peace, we're the ones with the bad attitudes. We're the ones with the sharp tongues, the lustful spirits. We're the ones doing opposite of that. Ooh, we quiet today. We, we all right? We, 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 we there? That's the reality that many of us face. We don't always wake up wanting to pray. We don't always pray when we go into sleep. And it's this reality. This reality is why I lift up a question for our consideration today. How do I walk in a way that's reflective of his identity that's rooted in me. The word tells us clearly 
When he created us, he breathed his spirit in us. The breath, the ruach in the Hebrew of God. The breath of God. It's inside each and every one of us. And therefore, as I move, that's the thing that animates me. That's the thing that keeps me moving, keeps me living. But when I think about my own life, it's not reflective sometimes of someone who is walking in that spirit that's in me. Because if we're being honest, it's hard walking in the way of righteousness sometimes. It's hard to do it when someone comes for your children. Yeah, you might lose all your Jesus then. It's hard when you late to work, trying to get there. So you speed into, through traffic and somebody decides to slow down right in front of you. Do I have a witness in the house? But the thing, family, that I want to uh, unpack and show us on today is because I believe that Psalms 1, verse 1 through 3, uh, I believe that there are some lessons and some insights that we can learn from the psalmist about how we ought to be reflective of the identity of God being rooted inside of us. Because the first thing that I see when I unpack this text, the first thing that is tailored to teach us is that if we are going to be reflective of his identity, Entity that is rooted inside of us, we have to embrace being planted in pressure. Verse 3 starts off, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water. You see, what this means is that when one recognizes that God is in them, you have to realize you are planted. Being planted means you have to go into the ground. You see, I grew up down in Miami, Florida. That's where I was born and raised, family. And when you have Caribbean parents, one of the things that they like to do is grow their own gardens in the backyard. Do I have a witness in the house? Uh, I grew up during a time where uh, I used to have mango trees in the backyard. Come on, somebody. I used to have banana trees in the backyard, somebody. We used to have all of those in the backyard. And our house did not just come like that. You had to go buy the seeds or get the fruits, and you had to take a shovel and go out to the backyard. You got to put it in the ground, stick your foot in, and start scooping up something. And then when you scoop it up, you take the seed, you put it in, and then you bury the seed. Or if you have a tree that's already there, you kind of do the same thing. You plant it and you bury the bottom, the roots of that tree. Do I have any witnesses that can testify? That, that was your story. You see, but the thing is, uh, it was important that we had to bury the seeds. You couldn't just throw the seeds on the ground. You had to scoop it. You had to put it in and you had to bury it into the ground. Oh. Uh, when you bury it, that means it's, uh, 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 it's going to be in an environment that is, uh, there is no, it's airtight. There, there's, there's no space in that environment. It's a pressurized environment. Uh, 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 and one of the things that prevents many of us from being able to reflect that image of God that's inside of us is the pressure that surrounds us. Sometimes life feels like it's burying you. Sometimes life feels like it's overwhelming. Monday was this challenge, and then Tuesday was good until about 5 p.m., and another challenge has arrived. Wednesday was all right, but Thursday, you caught all hell. And Friday, you just was tapped out done because it was another thing that came on. Then you thought you was going to go to church, and everything was going to be all right. But somebody came and tried you, and now you got church hurt. And then Sunday rolls around, and now you realize you got to go to the job on Monday that you did not like. And now Monday rolls around, and now you're frustrated from the days before. Life has an ability to put some pressure on you. But here's the thing that I need you to understand about when you're being planted and being buried. Because when you put that seed in a ground and you uh, bury it, the interesting thing about a seed is that before it grows up, it grows down. <laughs> All that. Before it grows up, it grows down. You see, a seed, it has to develop its roots to stabilize the tree. When the water is poured on the seed that's been buried, uh, it causes the seed to germinate and it starts to break out and now there's roots that's being done. And in this pressurized environment that is compacted with 
dirt and with rocks where this seed is buried and it cannot move. What begins to happen is that roots begin to break through and break down and it begins to push back against the very pressures that it's facing, y'all. It begins to push through the things that is under. And I need us to understand that when you realize that you have been rooted in him, you will not allow the pressures of life to defeat you. Why? Because God uses pressure to stabilize you. Oh, is there anybody in here who can testify to that? That in the moments where life had pressured you, where you felt like you were buried, that was when you found out that no weapon formed against you will prosper. That's when you find out that God will supply your needs. That's when you find out that he that is within you is greater than he that's in the world. Do I have anybody who understands that it was in the pressurized moments of life you were stabilized you got to realize that when you're planted you can embrace those pressurized pressurized moments because in those pressures there's purposeful growth there is growth that happens in pressure a seed, a tree that's planted, if it doesn't grow down, then it ain't going to grow up. It, it, uh, sometimes we want to put it in there and it just, oh, it's going to pop. No, no, no. That thing has to go deep down into the ground. Uh, you got to push back against things that's been pushing upon you. You got to go down deep. And there may be rocks there, but I'm going to fight through it. There may be dirt there. I'm going to fight through it. There may be some things that I cannot see. You're going to fight through it. Why? Because in this, in those pressurized moments that God says you're going to grow. He will be like a tree planted by streams of water. He puts you in those moments, in those uh, 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 dark places, in those pressurized moments. He plants you there because that's where you grow and you get stabilized. That's just the first teaching point. Second thing that I see in this text, what it's teaching us is that if we're going to reflect his identity of being rooted in us, we have to prepare for providential production. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, I got to prepare. Verse says in three, it says, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. It yields its fruit in season. It yields its fruit in seasons. You see, one of the things that prevents people from being able to reflect the identity of the God that is in us is because we don't see the fruit manifesting in our lives. You see, one of our problems as humans is that we've been socialized to think that every action is going to get an immediate reaction. I do this, I should get this. Well, I, I've been on this diet for a week. Why well, ain't lose no weight yet? Hold on now. Wait a minute. We've got to take some time on this. Come on now. I finally got a good, good job. Maybe I should now have the best credit. No, it takes some time. Oh, well, I showed up to church one day a week. Oh, no, you, this takes some time. We've been socialized to think that what I do ought to get an immediate reaction. But I don't think God works like that because we've got to understand that God ain't concerned about your time because God operates outside of time. So therefore, how God is pacing himself is on a whole different stratosphere than how you're moving. You see, you got to understand that sometimes, right, when we begin to <clears throat> dive into this thing with God and <clears throat> we now get planted, we got to understand that sometimes uh, with, with God, there will be things that you do that do not result in, in immediate action. Rather, it results in immediate dormancy. There are things that you have asked and prayed for that God is, you're going to have to take some time on this. 
there's some things that you've been worrying about. God is saying, you're going to take some time on this. But the thing that I love about this text is it says uh, a person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. I mean, you got it. I think you got it. So I think you got it. Okay, let me say that one more time, right? Uh, with God, God operates on a different time st uh, stratosphere than us, right? Because he operates outside of time, right? So with my mindset, when things happen, I think God should do it immediately. But then when it doesn't happen immediately, I mean my feelings and I feel some type of way. But the thing that I need you to know about this text is that it says a person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. In other words, just because things are dormant right now don't mean they aren't on the way. Uh, which means that there is a time where you're going to come out of that dormancy and you're now going to begin to bear fruit. Uh, fruit is going to come. Uh, in other words, what you plant will produce. What you put in the ground is going to come out. What you plant will produce. How many of you know that it may not come when you want it, but it's going to show up on time. And even if it don't show up on time, blessed be the name of the Lord that it showed up. Blessed be the name of the Lord that all the effort, that all the pain was not for vain, in vain. Why? Blessed be the name of the Lord that what I plant will produce. I, I, I remember, uh, you know, we got babies. You know, I got, I got a three-year-old. I got an almost two-year-old, right? Pray church. I always ask y'all, pray church. Uh, I remember not too long ago, my wife went to Target. Come on, somebody. You know, you know where I'm going. My wife went to Target. She went to Target. She comes home, and, and my boo, my babe, she got swimming trunks and shorts and swimsuits for the kids. I'm like, baby. It's like 35 degrees outside. <laughs> like, like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, where, where, where are they going? <clears throat> like, 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 for real, like, like, let's talk about it. Like, where are we going? We could have put that money elsewhere. Like, like, what are we doing? Right? She was like, yeah, I know it's not the season for it, but it's coming. <laughs> I know that it may not be, it may not look like the, what, what we should be doing, but it's coming to where they will exercise these attire. And I need somebody to know that it's coming. I, can I prophesy over somebody today and say that whatever you have been praying for, it is coming. Whatever you have been laboring about, it is coming. Whatever thing in your business, whatever thing for your child, whatever thing for your health, I need you to know that if you wait on it, it's coming. So what do you do? You prepare for it to come. I prepare like this church is going to pack out with four services. Why? Because I know it's coming. I'm going to do what I got to do because I know that there's going to be a day where every vision that I've seen, that everything that God put in my heart, it's going to be tenfold plus that. Why? Because I got to prepare for the fruit to come. It may not be the season, but the word says, it will come in a season. That's one thing, that's the beautiful thing about God, is that God, <laughs> there should be no, man, it's, God is, can be so predictable at times. Right? I know we don't know all things about God, but sometimes God can be predictable. Why is that? Because we know God operates in seasons. 
Oh, I know I'm in fall. Oh, I know winter coming, but I know spring's right around the corner. Then I know summer's going to be there. And then I know fall's going to be there. But then I know winter's going to be there. But then I know that spring. In other words, we know we serve a God who says, listen, you're here, but that season is just for a moment. That season is just for a season. There will be a time where you will come out and you will say, well, I remember when, but praise God, that ain't it right now. I remember when I used to be this, but praise God that I got out of that. When he planted me in that presence, moment. I thought that it was lost. I, I thought that I was done. There was no help. It was dark. It was pressured. It was tough. But now I sit here in spring and now I sit here in the summer and no weapon is challenging me anymore. I got out of it. So I bless God because I prepared for the fruit that was to come. That person is like a tree. Planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. So listen, if we're going to exercise that identity of God being rooted in us, I got to first realize that I got to embrace being planted in pressure. But then I also got to prepare for providential production. And the last point I'll make, and I'll be done in five, is that if we're going to reflect his identity being rooted in us, we have to expect a destiny of phototropic prosperity. I'm going to unpack that word in a second. That was the first time I heard that word this past week. I didn't know what it meant. Photo who? Photogen no, phototropic prosperity. I'm going to unpack it in a moment. Verse 3. person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither Whatever they do, prospers. Got to understand that this is a contradictory statement right here. Because how can not leaves not wither in various seasons? We all know, we see outside, we know what goes down. Spring, summer, the trees, the leaves are bustling and it's all beautiful. Fall, they begin to fall. It's a fall, they fall. And in the winter, there's no leaves on the trees. It is a cycle. It is supposed to happen where leaves fall off trees. They're supposed to wither. Regardless of whatever season they're supposed to. But the text says, whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do will prosper. You see, one of the things that I've discovered is that when God is rooted in you and you realize that, you have an advantage to where you move differently. You move differently. How so? I was watching a, a clip. Somebody sent a clip to me this week uh, in a group message that I was in. And it was a group of a, of a guy by the name of Myron Golden, who is a business growth consultant, right? He uses biblical principles uh, for financial uh, prosperity and freedom, those types of things. So I got a clip. And he said something using that word phototropic, right? He said... And this blew my mind. He says that trees grow in two different directions at the same time. Have you ever thought that concept? Trees grow in two different directions at the same time. When it grows down, that's the gravitraphic pull. Gravity is pulling it down. But when it grows up, when the stem grows up, that's the, it grows towards the light, which is the phototropic pool. <clears throat> phototropic is this phenomenon in plants where they exhibit growth movement in response to light. They grow towards the light. It grows up. The reason why this is important and such a beautiful concept to understand is because as the word says uh, uh, that you're like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers, is because when you are rooted in God, it don't matter what happens in your life, you will get stabilized down, but you will also grow on up. Uh, in other words, uh, the reason why you're going to make it and prosper despite the circumstance, uh, despite the situation, despite the lack 
thereof is because there is a God that is rooted inside of you. And that God that is in you is going to pull you up to the light. It's going to pull you out of the crowd. You'll be stabilized down, but he'll pull you on up out. He's going to take you down, but pull you back on up. Oh, I need us to know that 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary, there was a Jesus who was went to a gravitropic pool down into the grave and they thought it killed him and he was dead on a Friday but early on a Sunday morning that phototropic pool pulled him out of the grave and pulled him towards the light why so that you can have prosperity so that you can live so that you will not be defeated praise God for the prosperity that comes because he planted me I'm going to prosper because he's pulling me to the light. And he's pulling me to the light because that's who he is on the inside. So I praise God. I praise God. Because before we were ever thought of, he put himself in us. Now, we war back and forth with our flesh and our spirit all the time. But no matter what, he says, I'm here in you. So embrace where you're planted because I'm going to stabilize you in that because trees grow down. Prepare to produce something because trees produce fruit. But don't forget, expect your destiny to be one where you will prosper in seasons of drought. You will bear fruit when all around you seems lost. Because I'm phototropically pulling you into a place of prosperity. I don't know about you, but I want to be that rooted tree. I'm down deep in the dark with God, but he's pulling me into the light as well. If you look at a tree on the outside, you'll see how the branches go out. You see beautiful leaves on it. But that's the same image under the ground too. A tree on the outside looks the same way on the inside. Therefore, it don't matter the inversion of it. All that matters is that you're planted there. The word is clear. God has rooted himself in us. The challenge for today is who has yet to root themselves in him. If there's any of you who can admit and say, I'm not as rooted in him as I want to be. I'm not as deep as in with him as I want to be. I'm not that rooted tree. I'm more that tree, you just put it on the surface level and it's going to tip over when it rains. You put no effort into that. But you today want to say, I'm, I, I want to get rooted in him. I want to get deep. I want to get stable with him. If that's you, I invite you for it. I want to pray for you. I want you to be strong in your commitment today. Say, God, I am committing to be a rooted tree today. A tree that is anchored in the Lord. Yeah, I've been buried by life, but hey, I'm still growing. Yeah, I don't see the fruit, but I know that it's coming. And God, I want to get pulled to the light of prosperity. God, I want that peace that surpasses all understanding. If 
there's any one of you who says, I want to be rooted through baptism, just raise your hand. I got you. We'll see. Is there anyone that says, I want to be rooted in this church. I want to join this church. The invitation is here. I want to be rooted because I want, I want further study in the Word. Just raise your hand. We'll see you. We'll capture you. But I want to be like a tree. And I want to be planted. I want to be planted. So that my testimony can be that I'm the blessed one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take. I want to be the one to say that I delight in the law of the Lord. That there's no question of my commitment. I want to be a rooted tree. So Father, in the name of Jesus, your sons and your daughters are standing here, sitting here, listening. Because a new commitment has been made to be rooted in you. Father, I thank you for impressing upon the hearts of your children that they're not where they need to be. And I don't believe people are standing here for show. I feel that they're standing here because they're desperate for you, God. They want to be more rooted in their marriages. They want to be better rooted as parents. Better rooted in their health. They want to be better rooted. So God, I pray that you fill these individuals with a double portion of your spirit today so that they can walk in the way of the righteous. So they can be the example that you declare to all of heaven of what it looks like to walk in the way of the Lord. Help us, Father, to embrace these pressurized moments that we're in. Help us to prepare for the fruit that is to come. Help us, God, to move towards the light of prosperity. God, many of us are tired of the fight. Feels like the weight of the world comes down on us every single day. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to turn to. Feels like things are not getting better. So God, we give you permission to take over. We give you permission to take us as deep as you need us to take, to go. Because understand, God, that even though a tree grows in two directions at the same time, it doesn't grow up until it grows down. So we got to grow down, God. May we grow down on our knees in prayer. May we grow down in our daily devotion to you. And we get deeper with you, God. So that when we come out of the ground, because we are so stable with you, it doesn't matter the weather that comes, we'll still be standing. It doesn't matter uh, who tries to cut off a limb, we're still going to be standing. Because at the end of it all, when you come down, we want people to look at our insides, those rings of our tree stump, and be able to say, oh, I see that at that point they had a challenge, but wow, there were so many more years after that. Oh, but for the grace of God who sustained them. When they look at our inside, they'll be able to tell that they've been through so much, but my God, how faithful those people were. May our roots go deep, God, so we can stand tall and bear fruit. We thank you, God, so much for this moment, for this opportunity to recommit ourselves to you as rooted trees. 
we thank you, God. We love you. We look forward to being able to go deeper, to grow down so we can grow up. This is our prayer. This is our praise. In Jesus' name we do declare. Let all the rooted trees say amen and give God a hand clap of praise right here where you are. You may return to your seats. blessed us and been wonderful to us now is the time to show our gratitude and appreciation this is the part of service uh, where we can all participate by returning our tithes by giving by giving offering there are three ways you can give here at beacon light you can do this by cash shop dollar sign the light kc or mail funds to the church at 4841 paseo boulevard kc mo at 64110 or just uh put funds in the trays as they go around okay um may the deacons come forward us please bless the money that we are about to receive for this church please help us to um, be able to use this money for good and not bad thank you for this church thank you for the clothes on our back thank you for everything that you have done for us lord amen Let the church say amen. Amen and amen. If you were blessed by our worship experience, can you just give God a hand clap of praise today? And we praise God for our young people today, for just leading us in worship. It gets me excited about the, the future of our church because it lets us know. I'm talking like I'm up there. Uh, you know, it just gives me excited to know that our church is in good hands and you know, I know my elders are salivating right now. That means they can get a break. But uh, your work is not done, elders. Amen and amen. Listen, family, I just want to acknowledge any of our guests that have joined us today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, maybe your second, you're just not familiar with us. We just want to just want you to raise your hand. We want to just say thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you so much. God bless you. We trust and pray that this experience was fruitful for you and an enjoyable one as well. You as well. Thank you for being here. Praise God for you. Uh, listen, family, this is a new month of April. Amen. Uh, do we have anybody celebrating birthdays in the month of April? Do we have any April babies in the house? 
Anybody? All right, my, I see we have a couple in the house. I know my wife's birthday is in April. So listen, to all of our April birthdays, we wish you happy birthday. On behalf of your church family, we praise God for you, and we pray for the new year of life. That is just amazing for you all. And so happy birthday to you. Do we have any wedding anniversaries in the month of April? All right, now, I see you all. Happy wedding anniversary. We praise God for that. Brother, take care for all month. Come on, Doc. Bless her all month. It's just whole month. Amen. Listen, we are excited for that, and we praise God for that. Uh, in addition to that, just want to remind you all, we have our Youth Empowerment event tomorrow at 3.30. Drive smart. Car maintenance 101. Right? We want all of our young people here at our church one, at 3.30. All of our teenagers, our youth ministries is going to be leading us in that. And then we have our, our, our Wednesday uh, crime awareness event at 6 p.m. for all of our young people as well. Um, I believe there is food downstairs that has been prepared by the Fat Finders. I believe so. Um, and so you can go on downstairs. Yes, I got the head nod. There is food prepared downstairs. Um, and so we want to encourage you to go on downstairs and fellowship, enjoy one another, and make sure you please affirm our young people when you see them. Don't just walk by them. Give them love. Give them affirmation because I know they put a lot of effort into today, and we praise God for them for that. At this time, I want to invite you to stand for our benediction as we close our worship experience today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you, God, for the joyous occasion like today where we saw a pivotal point um, of our young people today, of our adventurers and our Pathfinders Club. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless them in their efforts, Lord. May everything that they've learned, uh, Lord, be manifested into their realities, God. And may uh, the rest of us who were here, God, all of us rather, um, Lord, continue to walk in the way of the Lord as rooted trees, uh, embracing the pressurized moments, God, uh, preparing for the providential production that we'll have that we will have so that we can move upwards towards the light of prosperity that you have called for us we thank you lord for everything that we've experienced we thank you for everything that you've done we asked and invited you to show up and you did that as well thank you god for everything you've done in jesus name we pray amen and amen Beacon life family i love you and there's nothing you can do about it god bless you and god keep you